different f, that different f uh, give different numbers. OK, I'll go back to that later. And OK, so I want to understand what can be the relation between the Velschinger invariance for two different real structures. OK, so for example, on P1 cross P1. And now I will take P1 as my model. And so I, I think I will just more or less talk about P1 cross P1. But, um, but this is the local model for uh, the general uh, setting. OK, so everything which happens is local. And locally, it's always given by, by this. So maybe locally, I should draw the sphere like that. So it's a serial sphere in, in P3. But now, uh, OK, so I want to go from this to this, for example. And it's quite clear how I, ca how I can do it. I just go through the, the quadratic cone, OK? And, uh, and then, so the, the natural idea is to try to, to start from here. OK, and to understand how we can go back, how we can deform in, in the two directions. So that's the, um, the very basic idea. So the only problem is that uh, this surface here in the middle is uh, singular. So we have to be careful in uh, counting curve in, in singular surfaces. But what I, what I can do, I can blow it up, these singular points. And what I obtain? Uh, so here you have the a pen so you have a pencil of lines passing through these points, okay? Which uh, see all points on the quadratic cone. So this is the image of the blow up. So now you are a real pencil of line over P1, and the uh, strict transform of this point is a rational curve with self intersection minus two. Okay, so now uh, so now we replace this if we want. By, by this, uh, by this uh, here's the surface. And now, uh, okay. So the, the the first idea is to now to count curve here, and then to go back here. But here we have to uh, uh, to be careful that uh, the presence of this. Uh, Curves of uh, self intersection minus two uh, makes the the whole most complex structure non generic, and so uh, you have to be careful with uh, enumeration of curves. And for example, let's uh, stay on the real uh, setting. If you do this game on this surface, you will not get something which is invariant. That's very easy to to see. So. Um, so the first problem is that okay. So here, uh, the 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 enumerative problem is not really well defined, which might not be a problem. So over over C right now, because we can I can play this game over C. And now I have only one side to move. Okay, I don't have two different sides. And over C, uh, some people already played this game. So it was Abramovich and Bertram. And uh, who related gromov vital invariant of P1 cross P1. OK, to some, uh, so enumerative invariant of sigma 2. So sigma 2 is this uh, surface that I obtain when you take the quadratic cone and you blow up the, the vertex. OK, and uh, here, more or less, what we want to do is, uh, is to obtain a real version of this uh, formula. But it's, okay. it's not completely straightforward, and uh, there is something to, to understand. But maybe first, uh, uh, okay, let me at least give you the, the main results. So with this strategy, what can we do? So this is. 
so far closed. Now it takes x tilde a complex surface, which is so uh, okay, with which has a unique. Minus two curve. E, okay, so this minus two curve ensures that you're uh, you're not with a generic almost complex structure. Okay, but uh, sorry, I will take some real uh, algebraic surfaces, and so since it's unique, it will be real. Okay, and uh, so more or less. So okay, let's suppose that. This curve has no empty real part. It's just for the picture. And uh, so with this picture in mind, so we can perturb x tilde c into two different uh, x1, c1, and x2, c2, so two different real algebraic surfaces. And the difference in the Euler characteristic of the real part will be exactly two, like here, OK? So this local picture, you can do it each time you have a minus two curve on x tilde, OK? With uh, Minus two. Okay, so, and this one would be the same. That. So this you can do, uh, and I, I'm not. So I'm not writing deformation because. Uh, so one way of uh, so here actually there is one very easy way. So maybe it's not visible here, but here going from this to this is almost straightforward. But this direction is kind of. More uh, complicated, and over the real po for the from the real point of view, for example, this won't be a deformation to, go to pass from here to here. Okay. So we can do that. So each time I have this one such object, I can uh, associate two real algebraic surfaces. And uh, so the main statement. Okay, I won't uh, phrase it precisely because it's not, uh, it's kind of uh, difficult. So uh, what I said is that if I count curves on x tilde, with the same uh, rules, I don't get any invariance. But if I take into account intersection with this curve E, OK, so now I will kind of twist my signs, taking into account the intersection with E. And it will not give me one sign, but a series of signs. OK, so we get, we define series of signs. That I will. Oh, Let's say mu e and k of c, which is still equal to plus or minus one. Uh, okay. Um, so e is for uh, mu one for uh, x one and mu two for x two. And k is uh, greater or equal than zero. And uh, so such that. I can compute the Velchanger invariance of uh, of this, so uh, so of this perturbation of my uh, singular algebraic surface. Okay, just using this. So actually, now I will have to sum some so over k and of okay some 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 enumerative problem, and I will. Uh, Sum this, uh, this sums. Okay, I don't want to precise this uh, enumerative problem, but what is important here is that I am working. So this is very easy. So the the part when I want to compute this this invariance using this method, the difficult part when I have to work 
is here. When I enumerate curve here, so first I, I take this surface, I count real curves passing through some points, okay, and I do it once. And then, for free, I get these two numbers, okay? WRX1, WRX2. So here I work, and after, so I have some multiplicities, and now, just by understanding how it intersect E, I, c I can say how many curves will deform in this direction, how many curves will deform in this direction. Yeah, they do not depend on X. So it's just a very local picture, and uh, thank you. Okay, or in other words, what, 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 uh, what I'm saying is that we can control the jump, the change of uh, Velchange invariance when we go through such a nodal surface. Okay, so it's kind of a uh, wall crossing uh, formula, or I don't know. Of change invariance. So I don't want to be precise. Okay, it's it's uh, it's not difficult to write, but I don't know if it's very informative. So this we can do. And uh, so it has a series. It has some. Uh, interesting corollaries that I would like to list, and then after I'll be back to uh, at least the idea of the proof of this. Um, and so first, one of the corollary is that if uh, if Rx is disconnected, okay, and uh, F is the whole Rx, then my Velchange invariants are not so interesting. If I have two real points, So you have at least two points in my configuration, then my invariance is zero. Whatever S is. And uh, so that was kind of funny. So, uh, so there are some computations for uh, the disconnected uh, P2 blown up at six points, but it was, you, have, you had a really huge formula so by Itenberg, Karamov, and Schultz. So th they wrote some huge formula, and uh, which takes forever to compute anything. And if you enter some, some numbers, then it's bit zero, zero, zero. But it's not clear at all that from this huge formula that you get zero. And with this picture, it's just it's clear immediately that this has to, to be zero. And we can almost also refine this. So. Uh, but uh, maybe okay. So, for example, if you want to study the modular space of uh, of uh, rational surf real rational surfaces, <coughs> okay. So uh, you you would like to to know, for example, given you have a rational surfaces real, take two connected components. Can you uh, degenerate your surface such that your two components attach? And we can refine this by saying that if uh, what's the way to phrase it? Okay, so suppose that Rx is not connected and take S1 and S2, two connected components, and, and suppose that there exists a degeneration of Xc such that the S1 and S2 are uh, attached. Uh, okay. Okay, so you go to the nodal surface, so like like this. Okay, then this will be zero if F contains both S1 and S2. So that means that uh, this might be, uh, I said might because uh, I 
So I, I don't have any example when, uh, okay. So this might be an obstruction for two connected components to, uh, to, uh, to be attached in the, in the degeneration, okay? But so far I don't have any example when they can't and when this is non-zero. Uh, computations are not so easy to do, so. Uh, So this is uh, that uh, so the Velchange invariance may be a tool in the study of uh, modular space of real uh, rational algebraic surfaces. And uh, okay, a third thing. So uh, I told you about uh, can we uh, compare the the Velchange invariance and the order characteristic of the real part, and uh, so up to uh, P2 blown up at six points, yes. Or, okay, then. Take the whole um, the whole invariance. So you have this inequality. So if the order characteristic of R x is less than the order characteristic of R x prime. And uh, so this is not true in general. So uh, starting from k equal 26, this is not true. But before 6 and 26, I don't know. So uh, it might be true for uh, del Pezzo surfaces, OK? And it would be interesting. But uh, so in general, it's, it's this, this won't hold, or at least not, not in this form. And, uh, and there is a kind of uh, analog statements uh, so, for example, in P2 blown up at six points with two connected components, if you put all the points on the connected components with the lowest Euler characteristic, the Velchange invariance will be greater than if you put all the points on the component with higher Euler characteristic. So there are some, some relations. Um, okay. Now, uh, maybe uh, I will go to a sketch of the proof artist. How, how can we... What is the idea behind this? <coughs> and the, st the starting point was, uh, so there is this formula in uh, complex geometry, okay? So you take P1 plus P1, and uh, you degenerate it to sigma 2, so this is something standard, uh, which goes back to Kodaira, at least. And now you, what you understand, what you try to understand is, so you are looking at counting curves. What happened to the curves that you are counting during this degeneration at the, at the limit? Uh, how do they how do they behave? Okay. And um, so here, for example, uh, let's try to do the same uh, with the real. So let's take uh, so. Sigma 2, okay, is just a P1 bundle over P1. And uh, we have two real structures on it. So now I just won't consider the real structure with the non-empty real part, because uh, I said that I don't want to consider the empty set. Um, so Sigma 2, so the real part, now I take a real structure, so that the real part is just, so it's kind of P1 cross P1, but twisted. And so the real part will be S1 cross S1. So it's a torus. I have no choice if the real structure. So it's not, not like P1 cross P1. If the real part is non-empty, then I have no choice. OK, so now you want to start from this. OK, so let's call this uh, conjugation C. So you start from sigma 2 and this complex conjugation. And you want to deform. You want to play the same game uh, and them. But then you want to deform this to some real surface. But then when you deform, the topology of the real part doesn't change. So if you are using a real deformations, what you get is P1 
cross P1, but with S1 cross S1. Okay. But at least to go into this direction, uh, it's almost you, you don't have anything to, to do for the, from the real point of view. They did almost all the work, uh, already all the work. So what you have to do is look at the curves and uh, look at the complex conjugation, and, and that's all. So this is quite uh, easy, and uh, uh, people noticed. Okay, several people not noticed this uh, that this direction was uh, was easy and possible, and used it to compute some Velshaj invariants uh, before. But on the other side, so if I want to go to this direction, to this direction by, okay, with uh, S2, then I have something is not continuous. So from the real point of view, something is not continuous. So that means, so here, that means that some pieces of the, of what is happening is missing. And uh, so actually, all the stories of deformation, they work pretty well uh, for, uh, from the complex point of view. But from the real, it's not something, it, it doesn't work because of this, because of this, OK? So uh, a piece of the picture is missing, which is not, doesn't matter in the complex case, but which does here. <coughs> so something is missing. And uh, let's try to see what is missing. And uh, to say this, let's do the following. So now, let's consider a threefold. With equation x square plus y square plus z square plus no minus no okay let's first work over c and then after this and uh, plus t square okay okay and this leave for example in, in c four no in c four I should have four variables. Okay, so now if you want, I consider a family of uh, of uh, quadric surfaces. So I have sigma, and of course, so it's close to C. Okay, I can so my parameter t is just a uh, moving parameter. So for t different to zero, I have a nice p1 cross p1, and at t equals zero, I have this singular fiber. Okay, and since I'm not happy with this singular fiber, what I what I can do is I blow up the whole family at zero, so of course, uh, apart from zero, and here I still have the projection, and away from zero it doesn't change, I will still have my nice uh, quadric, but now above zero, I will have my second here of surfaces that I had before, but I, had also, I have also an exceptional divisor. And yeah, thank you, thank you. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So I blow up at the origin, and uh, so now here above t equals zero, I have my. Uh, Fields of also phase sigma two that was also already appearing when I was blowing up the only surface, but now I am blowing up the whole family and I get something. So I get the exceptional divisor here, which is p1 cross p1. So that's that's very uh, easy uh, to check, in a straightforward computation. Okay, so now uh, where I should work to get something from uh, real is. Is here, okay? So here, I'm missing this p1 cross p1, but here I get it. So now you can see sigma prime as a family of quadric, <laughs> and uh, so sigma prime is the generation of x. Actually, it doesn't matter that it's p1 cross p1 uh, to x tilde union p1 cross p1. Okay, and they meet transversely along some curve that I will call V, okay? And this is exactly V square equal minus two in my, uh, in my X tilde, and here it's a one, one curve. So it's a curve of by degree one, one with, uh, 
okay uh, so now if I still want to to count uh, complex curves for example now I can uh, apply some uh, degenerating formulas for a county curves from here when they, when it degenerates okay and then if I, I can I can come back and then here on the real side now here we see two different real structures that we didn't see just sticking in here. Because now, okay, here, for example, if it's, if it's sigma 2, I only have one real structure, okay, this one. But now, on this top part that I added, I have two possibilities. I just told you uh, previously that uh, I have many real structures on P1 cross P1. And I have many real structures also, so for each 1-1 one, one curve here, I have two real structures for, for which this 1-1 one, one curve is real with non-empty real parts. And then I can choose the one oh. Okay, so here to the picture is something like this is P1 cross P1. This is the 1-1 the one, one curve and here I have my my x tilde, okay? And if you want, the thing is that here I have my points through which my, my curves are. And uh, what we are doing, we are breaking the problems into two parts. Here, here, here I enumerate curve, and here I choose the real structure. And Sorry? I didn't understand. Uh, now, if I want to enumerate real curves, okay, I will count real curves in uh, in x tilde, and then uh, here I will I will have to understand how so f when it it's hits this this curve, how I can complete those real curves to real curves also uh, here in the on the top. No. So normal cone degeneration formula. So okay, so it looks like, and for p1 cross p1 it is, but uh, after no, it's not. It, it's it's uh, okay. Sorry. Ah, uh, okay. Thank you. Um, okay, I, I can degenerate along a one-zero curve, but then I will have no choice. So here, the main point is that uh, now I have. If I fix a real, so now here the real structure is fixed. So on the curve we are gluing. Uh, the real structure is fixed. So now I have to uh, to find a P1 cross P1 such that I can, with the same real structure on this curve, I want to find two different real structures on this P1 cross P1. And I can only do that for one one curve. I cannot do that for one zero curve. For one zero curve, then the the, the real structure on the on the top will be fixed, and uh, it won't give it won't give me any information. And uh, okay, and here I get this one naturally because this is the one that I will get when I, when I want to deform complex structures. But you're right that I, I could do that for um, some other curves. Uh, okay, and um, yeah, and so now what we have to do is just uh, look how the curves uh, deform in uh, x1 and x2. Yeah, so for P1 cross P1, it's, it, it's, we can do this degeneration uh, looking at, uh, we don't have to do all that stuff, we can deform to normal cone, but for other x, it, it, it's not like that. Actually, it's, it's simpler to, uh, to, so from the symplectic point of view, it's, uh, it's even simpler, it's, it's simpler. So, uh, so this is just a symplectic sum formula. Okay, so so there there. Are okay, so I if I okay if I for example if I just want to compute something yeah I can degenerate uh, my ambient variety in the a lot of uh, a lot of pieces. But now the problem is uh, that still I have to solve some enumerative problem in the pieces. So if I can do it, okay, that's fine. If I can do it, 
Sorry? The relative sum is easier in this case. When? You only have one point if you do this one. So for example, I agree that I could uh, break uh, my uh, varieties in the, okay, so, I okay. But also here, I'm not interested, what I want to understand is what happened, I want to understand the jump of the real change invariance when the real structure changes. And here, uh, this picture is enough for me. But now after, okay, I can suppose that you want to compute the change invariance of uh, P2 blown up at 1,000 points, okay? And then you, you can play some games, so you will take a lot of conics, okay? And uh, you will blow up a lot of points on the conic, and so on. So at the end, you will get, you can have a X tilde with many minus two curves for which you can play the same game, but then at some point, you will have to compute the relative enumerative invariance uh, relative to a bunch of minus two curves. And if you cannot do that, then you have to simplify your problem. But for the change of real structure, just two is okay. But maybe, yeah, I guess there are plenty of other, uh, for some other purposes, other way to break the, the, the surface. Okay, so what I, Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So I, yeah, so from the symplectic point of view, this is uh, even simpler because I don't have to. So here I had to uh, think about uh, degenerating family and so on. But because here the problem is that uh, this minus two curve is not algebraic here. Okay. So, but. Uh, so in symplectic geometry, we don't care. So if we now, uh, we just uh, uh, take the same variety and with some uh, care of form. Now my V, my E, okay, now is, is just a symplectic curve, uh, rational curve. <coughs> in uh, X, and V square equal minus two. And what I'm, what I'm doing here is just a uh, kind of operation which looks uh, stupid, maybe, from the topological point of view. So I'm decomposing x into x and the normal bundle, okay, projectivization of the normal bundle, P over x plus c. And so there are glue along something, which here is my, my symplectic curve E. And here, so what is this? So since the V has self-intersection minus two here, this is just S2 cross S2. Uh, yeah, they intersect, but the, the, the rule, is, so the rule of E in X is not the rule of this one one curve in, in P1 cross P1. So for example, they have opposite uh, self-intersection uh, and so on. So it's, it's not, uh, okay, it's not completely the same. They're not completely the same. So they glue, so they're, they are meeting along, along a curve, which is X is E, and we, here it's one, one curve. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so, um, so here the only thing I, I'm doing is actually uh, with this, just do, doing this. So, uh, so from the, uh, the logical point of view, I don't do anything, but but uh, but now, uh, so for example, for gamma vitan invariance already, this is kind of nice. So we have the symplectic sum formula that, uh, so for example, by Yonel and Parker, which tells you that, for example, here I, I use them, so we can use them from the uh, gamma vitan point of view to compute absolute, for example, gamma vitan invariance of X in terms of relative gamma vitan invariance of X relative to E and S2 cross S2 relative to my curve, uh, my one one curve. <coughs> and uh, 
And, uh, and so here I just have to understand what happened from the real side. So the thing is that, so from the real side, here I have invariance, and here I have, so if I, count, uh, if I count curves here with the same sign I told you, here I have a bunch of signs, but nothing is invariance, okay? So here I have a lot of uh, different enumerative problems to solve. Each of them, depending on my configuration of points, will give me different answer. But the sum of all of, the, all of those will be invariance. So here I'm not claiming that I have some uh, relative uh, real invariance or so on, but just that I can count curves, I can count how they deform and I know that the sum, the result at the end, will be invariant. Wait, what do you mean? So, um, I mean, there's, there's generally some formula for relative invariance. Now, you're saying that if you want to count, if you want to compute relative relative invariance, then you want to count curves, but each curve has the sign. And you're saying that you can count the curve, the real curve using the same invariance formula, but that invariance formula doesn't really sign. No, but, so, okay, symplectic sum formula is not a formula. You can uh, translate it in formula if you want, but it just, it tells you during the, gener during the degeneration how the curves break. So you are really looking at curves and you are looking at how they break. So this, you can work over C or R. This you see how they break or how they deform. Okay. So you can also write down a formula just for counting real curves. Yeah, I can, I can write down a formula. But what I'm saying is that this side will be invariant, but this, so here I will have this equal to a big sum of uh, things, what, of some numbers. Okay, I'm saying that this will be invariant, but those numbers won't be invariant, just the sum. Okay, the signs, right? Yeah. Because I understand that you can count them and then in the end you put in the signs. Yeah. Um, Okay, and so uh, if we do things uh, carefully, then uh, we can write a precise statement of, of this. I have to stop? Ah, okay. 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 Bye. Yeah, maybe one minute. To, uh, because from, from this picture, just to explain why uh, when the real part is not connected, all well, the invariance vanishes. So at least it gives a kind of clear geometric picture. Oh, there, there is something I have to say. So uh, this corollary also relies on a theorem by uh, Kalamov and, uh, and uh, Shev Shishin about uh, uh, degenerations of uh, real symplectic surfaces. So I know that if I have a symplectic real surfaces with two connected components, uh, I can go to some uh, nodal symplectic surfaces. So if I have two connected components, I know that I can degenerate to something like that. Okay, so this is the first point. And now, uh, now I can apply my, my formula. So here, oh, it's not really, now it's not really a formula. So I can apply this uh, symplectic sum game, and here in the neighborhood, here I replace by some sphere. And I want to show that when I do this, then the, my invariance will be zero. And everything now relies just on uh, analyzing what happened for S2, for P1 cross P1 and S2. And for S2, so suppose I have my S2 like that in P3. <coughs> and suppose that I have at least two points in my configuration. It's very easy to construct. OK, I don't know if it's OK. At least one can construct a configuration of an, OK, suppose that here this is my curve along with. We are going to, to glue. So my curve of gluing is here. So it cuts my sphere into two parts. And now I can choose a configuration of points with one point here, one, one point here. And another configuration uh, with one point, with two points here, okay, which will give me the same Velchange invariance because it's the sphere, it's P1 cross P1, so I know it's fine. And with, with also the same intersection with E. And the way they will deform only depends on the intersection here, okay, in this formula. Okay, so now I have, so that means that 
Here I will have the same veil change invariance from the sphere. But now in one deformation, I will look at curves passing through points. Some of them will be here and some of them will be here. So I know that we'll have no rational points because the point set has to be connected to, to the RP1. So here I know that it is zero. And the other one, I will have all my points here. And uh, that's, so I know that this invariance will be equal to zero. Okay, so, okay, I should stop. Thank you. Ah, in five minutes.